medicine rehabilitation of Odisha, Indian Association of Physical Medicine Rehabilitation. I welcome you all for uh, today's webinar that is on diabetic arthropathy. As you all know, diabetes is a gateway of many diseases involving multiple systems of the body. Diabetic arthropathy is one of the important complications of musculoskeletal system uh, because of from long standing diabetic mellitus. There are a number of uh, controversies existing on conservative management of diabetic arthropathy. Uh, uh, physiatrists really play a, a key role uh, for this uh, management of diabetic arthropathy. So I hope this lecture will be definitely useful for a young physiatrist and postgraduate students, residents. And this webinar is meant for that only. And I am uh, very privileged to have with us Dr. S. L. Yadav, the professor of uh, PMR department, AMS New Delhi. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting your invitation as a chairperson. Sir, is a fellow, sir is a fellow of WHO, ICMR, and National Academy of Medical Science, NMS. He is a master of National Board of Examinations and member of Internal Society, uh, International Society of uh, Spinal Cord and ISPO, ISPRN, International Federation of Neuro Rehabilitation. He was also uh, uh, served as a president of our national body, IAPMR. His research interest includes mainly musculoskeletal and neuro rehabilitation. He is one of the noble officers to promote use of ICF in India. He has a vast experience of 25 years in the field of physical medicine rehabilitation. And to his credit, he has more than 20, uh, 55 uh, peer reviewed publications to his credit. So, thank you very much, sir, accepting our invitation for chairing this session. Now, I would like to request you, sir, please introduce today's speaker, Dr. Rai R. Chandran, uh, for uh, presenting his talk. Over to Yadav, sir. Thank you, Dr. P.K. Shao. I really feel proud and privileged that you have given me this opportunity to chair this session. And I think the credit goes to you and your team to have this, this kind of you know, teaching activity in the field of physical medicine rehabilitation during this COVID era. Really great in, initiative. And I congratulate you in person and other your team members, including Dr. Das and Nirta team. Because nobody had taken this initiative, this kind of initiative, even not in our IAPMR. So that's a great. And today, I would like to in introduce Dr. Roy, who has been talking on the subject of diabetic arthropathy and what are the views from as as far as the physical medicine rehabilitation is concerned. So I'm pretty sure that uh, probably the residents are going to be enlightened by his talk and probably add on to their day in day out practice in the field of PMNR. So Dr. Roy, who is currently, he did his post graduation from Government Medical College Trivendram and currently he is working as an associate professor at Koji Code Medical College. He had numerous original publication in the national and the international journals. He got also National Award, the Dichi Hospital Medic Award, and also an Ishia Vasant Memorial Junior Faculty Award. And he is really doing a good job for the Indian Medical Association in the Kerala branch, who had got list of the IMA Award, which I am not going to enumerate here, like because the pursuit of time, because that's going to take a lot of time. Better we would like to hear from him, so that that can really get us benefited by his talk. Currently, he is a Joint Secretary, IMA Kojikod branch, where he is serving as a disability support scheme. He is also currently working as an honorary secretary to IMA, Kerala Health Scheme. And he has got quite a bit 
other extracurricular activities such as best director award and also like he is contributed as a sport person like a captain in trivandrum government medical college as a in the cricket team so i just hand, hand it over to dr roy to initiate his talk so that everybody could be benefited up, out of his deliberation so over to dr roy is the screen visible sir yeah you are very much yes, visible can you just share your screen please okay respected uh, yadav sir my dearest uh, friend sahu uh, muridir sir my dearest friend premanand the teachers uh, seniors and friends and thank you sahu for giving me an opportunity to present uh, a topic before this uh, august audience i will start my topic with a, a small story a drunken man who reeked of alcohol sat down on a subway next to a priest the man's tie was stained his face was plastered with red lipstick and a half empty bottle of gin was sticking out of his uh, coat pocket he opened his newspaper and began reading after a few minutes he turned to the priest and asked say father what causes arthritis the priest replied it's caused by loose living being with cheap wicked women too much alcohol and sleeping along with prostitutes and lack of bath the drunk muttered in response well i'd be damned then returned to his paper the priest thinking about what he said nudged the man and apologized i'm very sorry son i didn't mean to come so strong how long have you had arthritis my boy the drunk asked answered i don't have it father i was just reading here that the pope does so ladies and gentlemen i am here to present a group of uh, musculoskeletal problems caused not due to alcohol or drugs or women but because of being more sweet uncontrolled diabetes so the musculoskeletal complications of diabetes so this musculoskeletal complications probably that is the most common cause of morbidity among diabetic persons it commonly affects the musculoskeletal system resulting in significant morbidity the incidence is very high it is uh, it's amount to 30 to 60% coming to the pathogenesis the most important thing is the formation of the age that is the advanced glycosylation end products that will affects the microvascular uh, the, the endothelium and that can damage the blood vessels and the nerves collagen accumulation in the skin and the periarticular structures will produce uh, changes in the connective tissue all this will amount to the 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 group of arthropodes the extent of this age advanced glycosylated or glycation end products formation depends on the concentration and the duration of the reducing sugars that means the period of the uncontrolled diabetes and the lifespan of the cells the cells having more lifespan like uh, vascular endothelium nerves and the connective tissue will be more affect, affected that is why the diabetic persons are more prone to the uh, cardiovascular disorders the neuropathies and the connective tissue disorders uh, uh, ending in uh, what is known as the diabetic arthropathies so this all these things will increase the stiffness of uh, collagen tissues in the tendons ligaments articular cartilages and the articular capsule which will sir, produce uh, excuse me sir yeah, please make your slide to full for probably your slides are not running also can you see the slides no it is only slide view mode but it's not full screen mode okay okay okay, okay. and your slides are also not running yes it is no it is uh, no worse share again what about now yes it is full screen now okay we can see now okay so increased stiffness of the collagen tissue uh, will produce uh, stiffness in the tendons ligaments articular cartilage and the articular capsule is all uh, so the end result is uh, 
the, the things like uh, desicapsulitis, trigger, dupatrans, or uh, compressive neuropathies like carpet tunnel syndrome. So the musculoskeletal complications may go unrecognized or simply be overlooked in daily practice, clinical practice by the physicians. But as mentioned, they are the main cause of mortality, morbidity. Many of them are treatable with the resultant improvement in the quality of life and more independence in the activities of daily living. So I will enumerate, uh, enumerate the, some of the common rheumatological syndromes and diabetes. Unique to diabetes mellitus is the diabetic muscle infarction. Occurring more frequently in diabetes, diabetic chiroarthropathy or the limited joint mobility syndrome, neuropathic arthropathy, diabetic amyotrophy, uh, dupatrans disease, Occurring more frequently in diabetes, others are the stenosing uh, flexor tenosynovitis or the trigger, adhesive capsulitis, different sizes of uh, tendinopathies, and hydroxy appetite deposition diseases, HADD. They are uh, three times uh, more common. This causes hydroxy appetite disease causes crystal uh, tendinopathies. They are three times more common uh, than in uh, normal population in diabetes. And the CTS and the tarsal tunnel syndrome occur more frequently in diabetes. There's complex regional pain syndrome and osteoporosis in type 1 diabetes, but bone formation has more bone formation in the type 2 diabetes, like what we see in DISH, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperosis. Condition sharing risk factors of diabetes and metabolic syndrome like OA, gout, and pseudo gout, the DISH, and the ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, the OPLL will produce uh, myelopathies. Coming to the hand abnormal, I, I'll be uh, enumerating a few of those uh, complications. This is the hand abnormal, the CTS, the, the trigger, the dupatrans contracture, and the limited joint mobility. Coming to the upper tunnel syndrome, most common metabolic cause of CTS is definitely diabetes mellitus. Second is hypothyroidism. 10 to 15% of patients with CTS have dysglycemia. But we had conducted a study in uh, Kerala and it showed that abnormal fasting plasma glucose was present in 30%. So the 15% actually that is in Westerners. So because uh, India is the diabetic capital of the world and uh, the prevalence is very high, the 30% of the CTS persons have abnormal uh, glycemia. 10 to 25% of patients with diabetes will develop carpal syndrome can start even in the pre-diabetic phase itself. So more common in women than in men, it's usually bilateral. Uh, as mentioned, this is the cause of fibrous proliferation, the collagen alteration of the flexure tendon synovium and thickening of the transos carpal ligament. You know the symptoms, I'm not going to the details, uh, concerns, numbness. Flick sign, flick sign is actually a symptom when there are symptoms, the patient will flick or shake the hand, which will relieve the symptom. Velix phenomenon is very important. Velix phenomenon is seen, seen in 30%. Usually, the symptoms of the carpal tunnel are con, is con, confined to the hand. But in Velix phenomenon, uh, this will be, uh, there will be symptoms uh, into the forearm or even the shoulder, arm or even the shoulder. That is called Velix phenomenon. Uh, in late, uh, there might be weakness or wasting. The signs, you know, the signs, phalanx, the reverse phalanx, the Direction, direct compression test, the uh, most uh, specific, the provocative phalanx set, that is a combination of phalanx and the direct, uh, direct compression test. Hoffman signal sign, the semmers vincent monofilin testing using 1.65 and 2.83. At the tip of the fingers, usually the two-point discrimination is uh, uh, two millimeter on the tip of the fingers. Uh, if it is more than three, it is doubtful, and five, that confirms. Uh, the sensory deficit at the specific areas. And the BP cuff compression test of Jelliet and Wilson has got the historic value. The square risk signs, very important, the ratio of the risk thickness to the uh, width is greater than 0.7 means the person is at high risk of developing uh, carpal tunnel syndrome. All our a hot dog sign is a newer addition. Uh, they say that that, that is more specific uh, do, uh, pla, uh, uh, dorsiflex the wrist, you, you can see a swelling on both sides of the palmaris longus tendon. That means there is uh, tenosynovium uh, thickening. 
So, you know that the sensory deficit in carpal tunnel syndrome is usually confined to the three and a half fingers and not the thinner remnants. So, thinner remnants is supplied by the palmar cutaneous branch, which is a branch of median nerve which arises uh, uh, the lower third of the, uh, the forearm and traverses above the transverse carpal ligament. And if uh, there is sensory deficit at the thinner remnants, that means a double crush syndrome. Double crush syndrome means uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and or and another compression above. It can be uh, even a, a, a C7 uh, radiculopathy or C8 radiculopathy even. So, sorry, C6 or C7 radiculopathy or a, a, a median nerve compression above like a pronated TV syndrome. So, I mean, investigation, you know that NCS and severe in, uh, confused. If you have confusion, uh, wasting and confusion, you can do an EMG, USG, MRI. I mean, go to the details. Uh, management, NSAIDs or diuretics in the anti edema measures in the initial phase. Steroids as an upper hand. Uh, if that's the court is actually safe in diabetes, if, if it is in low dose. If the person has dysesthesia, you can manage it. Sprinting is effective in the early cases, night sprinting. Definitely local steroid injections has a role because uh, it is anti-edema. And, uh, and contra one, one complication of steroid, the collagen alteration, so the, that the, the, the steroids can uh, weaken the collagen, uh, that may decrease the thickness of the carpal tunnel. Surgery in the moderate or uh, severe cases or in failed uh, conservative management, even in mild, open endoscopic or uh, uh, newer thing is a percutaneous USG guided fenestration is good in uh, uh, more, uh, mild to moderate cases. You know that uh, usually the rest phase is uh, uh, 10 to 14 days, uh, but in percutaneous fenestration, uh, the, the hand can be active uh, within a period of five to seven days. See, in diabetes, uh, CTS is sometimes is not just mechanical compression. Uh, you know that uh, carpal tunnel syndrome is actually a uh, compression of the medial nerve. The, what compression? The external compression of the carpal tunnel, uh, of the medial nerve inside the carpal tunnel. But in diabetes, it can be sometimes an internal compression of the medial nerve. So internal compression uh, can be due to the collagen alteration can occur inside the carpal tunnel, so inside the medial nerve. So it can ca happen anywhere in the course of the medial nerve, but um, unfortunately, if that occurs inside the carpal tunnel, this may mimic uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, even in clinically and in uh, uh, radiologically, sorry, uh, electrophysiologically. So in these cases, uh, the result of the surgery will not be that much uh, good. Yes, coming to the next thing is the trigger finger. That's genosing uh, structure, genosinovitis. Prevalence is 5% in type 1 and 36% in type 2 person, compared to 2% in general population. Compared to non-diabetic, CTS and the trigger finger develop hand in hand in the same individual, more common in females, more often uh, bilateral, most more often uh, multi-digit in uh, diabetic than in uh, non-diabetic, middle ring and thumb fingers are uh, more affected. That relatively spare the index and small finger due to unknown reasons. You know that there is, there can be genovaginitis, it's the thickening of the cover of the tendon, covering of the tendon or the thickening and constriction of the A1 pulley. So symptoms, you know the symptoms, finger stiffness or pain, a finger uh, or hand, uh, a swelling or lump in the arm, the catching or popping and straightening the finger, which is called triggering, uh, finger struck in bent position, locking or locked and fixed, rarely. So first treated definitely with anti-inflammatory medications, physical modalities have very, very minimal effect. Steroid injection, uh, when uh, done properly under USC guidance, especially one injection is curative um, in 70 to 75, and two injection almost 80 to 90 if, if performed at uh, under USC guidance. So if failed, you can do uh, open percutaneous or endoscopic. 
It's a simple procedure. We had started doing a USC guided finger release. You can see this patient, a very simple procedure. This is, you know, this is a triggering. We have done a, a needle uh, release using a needle and under a transparent garden. You can see the result is immediate. So the person can be active within a couple of days. Very simple procedure under the USC garden. Duplicant's disease. The prevalence in diabetic person is 20 to 63 percent. 30 to 39 percent of the persons with diabetes contractors have diabetes. Ring and finger, uh, middle finger are uh, more commonly affected compared to the fifth and the ring finger in uh, non diabetics. Occurring, uh, the occurrence is due to the modified fibroblast, myofibroblast, which resemble smooth muscle cell causing contraction. Because and there is increased type 3 and 1 collagen deposition. So it can affect the feet, which is called uh, ladder horse disease, or even the penis, which is called Peyronie's disease. And tabletop test of Houston is used. You can see, you place the uh, hand on the table if the palm is not touching. That means a surgery is not indicated if the test is negative. The, the person can place the hand here. Uh, so surgery is not indicated. The management, uh, stretching and splinting early, you can give, if there is early nodules, you can give inhalation injections of hyaluronidase or steroids. A newer player has enzyme injection, the Zyaflex, the collagenous cross redeem histidium, approved by USFT in 2010, but that may cause lax. Needling is uh, good, very good. Need, that means the needle aponeurotomy that to puncture and break the cord. The literature says surgery is indicated when the MCP contracture is more than 30 degrees or the PAP joint has any degree of contracture. But we had uh, done a surgery in this person uh, who have uh, MCP flexion contracture of uh, 90 degree, needle aponeurotomy under uh, USC guidance. And the result is good. This is a result after one week. Uh, there is some uh, uh, arthrogenic contracture of the uh, PIP joint. So there is some contracture. Uh, we had uh, uh, done uh, uh, manual stretching and uh, now the hand is almost uh, having good function. See, this was a case done in plastic surgery in a diabetic person. The person had cellulitis and infection after that and the person came to our OP with stiff hand due to CRPS. So in a diabetic person, definitely surgery has a role. But in a diabetic person, I think a minimal invasive procedure like a needle aponeurotomy is good because we can, the complications are minimal. The, the, we can do it uh, at n number of times, but surgery definitely it can, it has a, a complete removal of the thickened uh, deep fascia, but complications are high, especially in diabetic persons. Coming to diabetic capsulitis, 25% uh, of subjects with diabetic capsulitis have diabetes. The prevalence in a diabetic person ranges from 12 to 30%. That means there is a five-fold uh, incidence than in general population. You know that uh, two principal characteristics are there, pain and contracture. Movements are restricted in a characteristic pattern. External rotation and abduction first, then flexion, then internal rotation, lastly the extension so this is the, in the descending order of this severity. So external rotation abduction early, the others late. The, the pathophysiology is similar to that of uh, dupitant contracture. There is excessive uh, type three and one collagen uh, secretion and deposition, and uh, there is occurrence of the myofibroblast, will produce, which will produce under contraction. So the, there is uh, the, the why there is uh, uh, the, the dupitant contracture. Uh, own resolve spontaneously, but in many of the cases of uh, adesic abstractors, there, are, there will be some spontaneous resolution. Uh, because uh, the expression of the pro-inflammatory cytokines like uh, MMP, interleukins, and TNF are lower in the joint, so the expression that will be high in the tissues, so the contract, the, there will be an ongoing process of uh, uh, making the micro, myofibroblasts. So, the AC won't resolve, AC results and not the dupitant contraction. There is a phase, phase one, increasing pain and increasing stiffness. 
that means an inflammatory phase the 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 thing is the person will have predominantly nocturnal pain so night pain differs the stage 1 from stage 2 and stage 3 so the terminal rom can uh, is restricted that means that the abduction and the external rotation minimally phase 2 has actually two phases early phase 2 and late in early phase 2 there will be night pains there will be progressive limitation of uh, uh, range of motion in all, all uh, directions. This is the freeze or the adhesive phase. So early phase two, there will be night pains. Lay there won't be night pains. Is three, the painless return of movement. That means a thaw. So previously, we thought that uh, in, in the 100% of cases, there will be painless return of the uh, return of the shoulder movements and the function. But the recent studies have shown that in 90%, the pain will resolve. Pain is the thing that will be resolved in 20 to 13 months, not the stiffness. The 40% will have slight persistent limitation in ROM, and 50% will have will develop permanent loss of range. So the, in persons with adhesive capsule, we should we should act early and treat aggressively. So the three stages is actually akin to three stages of a man's life and single free there is no limitation and married the range is limited the year moments are limited and stage three divorced there is a complete return of the moment you are free coming to the investigations definitely there will be a x-ray because x-ray won't give you much idea uh, unless in stage two or early stage three there will be a restriction of the joint space you can see on the right there is a uh, restriction of the joint space. Left is a normal X-ray. Right, there is definitely joint space restriction. But you should definitely uh, ask for an X-ray because some other things like a tumor can present as anti-sigmatitis. USG don't have much role. You can pick a uh, concomitant uh, rotator cuff disease. And the classical thing is the decreased sliding of the rotator cuff under the uh, uh, under the green, uh, the acromion. That's the only sign we can see in the USC. Arthrogram has got historical value, but you can see beautifully, you can see the decrease in the oleum of the uh, rotator cuff. On the left, uh, there is a normal arthrogram and right uh, restriction of the oleum. Coming to the management, see the time. This is a, this is a uh, rail, engine railway time, 12.75. Time is the most important thing in the management of any of the rheumatological uh, complications of diabetes, especially adhesive capsulitis. Because if you pick the patients in the early phase, in the patient with cyanobitis, when there is night pain, you can restrict, you can, uh, you can uh, block the, the shoulder from getting stiff. So time is the most important thing. Uh, if you... If, uh, get the patient in late stage, the treatment uh, demands weeks. India is definitely, India is uh, incredible. Uh, we have got, where in the world we can see this much of types of cults of food, language. Where in the world you can see monuments like this? Where in the world we can see scenes like this? We used to place our footwear in uh, the place which are meant for that. Even in, in safe custody. Even burgers uses ATM. And where in the world you can see this much of systems of uh, medicine in one country? We got almost uh, 30 plus systems of medicines in India. We have got verbal and herbal medicines, acupuncture, massage therapy, some uh, therapies, uh, some sort of medicine which are mainly water based, some sort of puddles. Uh, camps like this, which uh, treats even premature education. And uh, after this qualified and uh, unqualified quacks treatment uh, from this uh, persons, we get, usually get persons in this late stage two phase, unfortunately. And the management, in a side pain modulators, uh, some studies have seen that uh, calcitonin is good for uh, night pain. Exercise, Definitely, there's a mainstay, the court man's exercise. I'm going, not going into the details. Uh, you should uh, stretch, uh, arm overstretch. 
medial stretch and hand behind the back. You can utilize uh, shoulder wheel or pulleys. Repetition is more important than doing one long session. Short sessions of five to 10 minutes repeated every time per day, several times per day is uh, beneficial. Try to, the person should try to push the shoulder just slightly past the joint of pain during each session. This is a very interesting study, a prospective study of 77% with frozen shoulder to compare the effect of intensive physical therapy and manual stretching versus home exercise within pain triggers. That means a supervised neglect. The, the, the thing is that whether we need an institutional therapy or a, or a supervised uh, home therapy. The result is at 24 months, two months follow, 90% wasn't treated at home. That means the supervised neglect had normal or near normal painless shoulder, but only 60% of patients in this group getting an aggressive, intensive physical therapy reached the goal. So home-based therapy, but you should definitely advise the patient properly regarding exercise is better. For pain, uh, you can uh, give supraskapra and nerve globe in the articular steroids is very good especially in persons with synovitis. So it is effective, very effective in persons with synovitis means there is night pain. So if you give an injection in a person with synovitis, this will definitely prevent the contraction. So if the person ha is having uh, uncontrolled diabetes, very 400 or 500, you can try intraarticular injection of sodium hyaluronate. So mainly in patients with them, cortico injection, corticosteroid injections are contraindicated. Other things like glenohumeral saline distension, mobilization and under, under anesthesia, the studies, recent studies uh, are not supporting them. Arthroscopic release uh, can be advised in uh, persons for uh, resistant cases. Coming to uh, last slide, last few slides, steroid injection in diabetes. Can we give steroid injections? The answer is a big yes. A single intra-articular steroid injection have very, very little. The blood sugar will be increased to 20 to 30 milligram than the base uh, for 24 to 48 hours per, uh, after a single intra-articular injection. This won't produce any systemic problem to the patient. So you can definitely give safety right. Soft tissue injections, on the contrary, uh, or peritendinous injection can cause an elevation, that too, at this uh, rate of 20 to 40 in blood sugar, but that will persist for uh, one to three weeks. So physical, coming to the physical modalities, do they have a role? A tense, very effective in decreasing the pain, but the thing is whether they will resolve the problem. This is another study in modalities such as microwave, short wave, and heat lamps are, are sometimes considered as additional measures in the rehabilitation process, although they have not proved to be particularly beneficial in any specific phase of shoulder stiffness. Adding ultrasound, actually ultrasound is good in some things like OA hip or OA knee, or uh, hip arthritis or knee arthritis, but uh, here in shoulder, adding ultrasound to the physical therapy exercise has not shown any additional benefit to therapy long. Other modalities such as electrophysiotherapy massage or uh, more typical modalities such as hyperbaric oxygen and magnetotherapy have been used, but no additional benefit could be proved and none of this treatment fits into a standard shoulder rehabilitation algorithm. So, ladies and gentlemen, pain is uh, inevitable, suffering is uh, optional. Suffering from pain is definitely, it is surely optional, which can be decided by the treating physician, especially a physiatrist in a case of diabetic arthropathy, who can uh, decrease the suffering and increase the quality of life in a person with diabetic arthropathy. Uh, see now, in this new world, most patients expect or need to recover from a disease without much pain. They demand no pain for gaining something. And conversations like this is very common nowadays. 
what are you talking about hen just lay x and the hen says no i want an epidural so in the patient's need to recover from a disease without much pain and they to they need to recover from disease in a short period also so they demand now demand no pain for gaining something so uh dears uh, we should not behave love like uh, old crows waiting for uh, natural resolution of symptoms like in adhesic capsulitis or relying just on uh, physiotherapy the physical modalities which have probably no effect in many of this uh, the rheumatological problems of diabetes we should behave like uh, a new crow modern crow diagnose early treat aggressively with interventions pain uh, interventions uh, so to allay the sufferings and long term complications of persons with diabetic arthritis so the take home message is muscular related complications are the most common cause of morbidity in diabetes uh, it predicts an ongoing my- microvascular complication many of them can be treated very effectively by a physiatrist with timely interventions using injections minimally invasive uh, procedures with resultant improvement in the quality of life and dl i uh, say that minimally invasive procedure are beneficial for many of the diabetic musculoskeletal problems of uh, pain syndrome because of the least complications and uh, rehabilitation physicians have got an important role in the management of the diabetic arthritis because we are we are uh, clinically good we can diagnose person early we know regarding the exercises and the physical modalities and also in the intervention and thank you very much uh, for the patient hearing now this is question uh, session but see uh, as teachers uh, this are the top answers we you don't know the answers one i think the question is wrong so this is escape the questions second i will uh, tell you tomorrow third don't ask foolish questions fourth you will study this in the next class <laughs> the most famous one next nice question those who know the answer can raise their hands i i know that i cannot escape uh, from uh, the questions today but i have got a uh, expert like uh, uh, yadav sir uh, sahu uh, and uh, uh, pcm pc muladin sir so i, I think i am safe uh, thank you very much again thank you sahu uh, for giving uh, me an opportunity thank you very much thank, thank you sir. dr roy chandran for giving an excellent talk on the diabetic arthropathy and i think in your talk you had covered the upper extremity diabetic arthropathy only there is other arthropathy which also pertains to the lower limb but it was an excellent talk and in which you had covered about papillary syndrome the stenosing flexor tenosynovitis trigger finger and dupuytren contracture and the shoulder arthropathy because of the diabetic mellitus and in which you had the discussed about the you know various modality for the clinical signs where the you can diagnose i mean it's uh, good for the you know young budding physiatrists to diagnose the case of cts by various clinical tests and also like the treatment methods where probably you had discussed like the what's the role of these steroids and if it's right because of the non controlling diabetes mellitus like other agents like hyaluronic acids which can play a very important role to treat such entities following the diabetes mellitus and also the like the cases where they were not treated like what the good time to refer the patient to the surgeon where the surgical inter- intervention can taken place to treat such entities which are 
contributed because of the first diabetes mellitus. So it's a very nice talk, and the this paper is open for the discussion. So I think Dr. Shaw, if you can read about questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Roy, for excellent presentation. We have a few questions in the chat box. Uh, one question from Dr. Nehal. He is asking, do we have any correlation between time since having diabetes mellitus and occurrence of arthropathies? Any relation between time and occurrence of disease? Definitely, yes. Definitely, yes. I have mentioned in the early slide that depends on the duration of the disc glycemia or the hyperglycemia and the, the, lifespan, of the, yeah, the, the lifespan of the cells. So the cells having more lifespan will be affected more like uh, nerve cells uh, and the Synovia. The, the thing in uh, type 2 diabetes is uh, type 2 diabetes has got two phases the phase of pre diabetic phase and the over diabetic phase. The pre diabetic phase, the, you know that the pre diabetic phase, the uh, FPS will be more than 100 and less than 126, or the SBMC is between 5.7 uh, and 6.4. That is the phase of actually metabolic syndrome. The complications. Even uh, CBDs can arise at the metabolic syndrome itself. So the thing is that uh, the person will be saying, I'm uh, diabetic for the last uh, 10 years, but person might be having dysglycemia for uh, 15 or 20 years. That is a problem. So the detection of diabetes, uh, uh, the, the, the period of uh, diabetes may, be, may not be the point from the detection of his or her diabetes and the other occurrence of the uh, syndrome, the person might have diabetes or dysglycemia for several years. So that definitely there is an association between the complications and the duration of the dysglycemia, not the diabetes. Yeah, Dr. I am agree with you. you know, like most of the time, the diabetes always diagnosed as an accidental finding. You know? sir, sir. Because over the long period of time of dysglycemia, yes, doesn't show any symptoms, you know, but at per chance at the have to go for under some surgery or something else. Yes. Sir. Then only it is diagnosed. So one never knows like how long it's been there hyperglycemia. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. that's the issue. You're right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Doctor Sahu, just I have some uh, questions. Uh, shall I ask? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Roy is a very good presentation, excellent presentation and a very good conclusion, <laughs> what you have done. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. Uh, regarding the questions, you, whatever you presented, it's the first time I'm hearing uh, really uh, excellent. See, um, we are seeing a lot of diabetic patients, yes. but the patients who are having controlled diabetes are developing a lot of uh, problems uh, related to diabetes. Uh, I, I think you are doing a lot of uh, studies on diabetic patients. And do you have any explanation for that? Uncontrolled diabetic people, they doesn't have any problem. That is, uh, in our uh, clinical, we are seeing like that. See, uh, uh, the control in diabetes, uh, that means uh, there is uh, four domains. One is the uh, control of uh, dysglycemia, control of uh, uh, triglyceridemia or uh, uh, dyscalcinemia, uh, control of hypertension and control of obesity. So many focus just on dyscalcinemia. Many for many di diabetes is just uh, increase in blood sugar. But actually, diabetes, especially the type two diabetes, is a syndrome uh, with the dyscalcinemia, dyscalcinemia, hypertension and obesity. So all these four factors will uh, produce. Vascular complications, CBD, actually diabetes is, uh, some say, diabetes is it's an aseptic vasculitis. Diabetes mainly affects the vessels, aseptically. So, uh, where there is vessel, uh, there will be complications. So, so the main they... the complications are due to the fact that uh, we mainly focus on this dysglycemia alone. So, the okay. other three, the facets of the control is ignored. That is the reason. So you say it's a metabolic, like yes, yes, definitely. It's a syndrome, so it's a metabolic syndrome, not only due to diabetic. Uh, see, it's not only the cause, it's actually a syndrome. 
yeah thank you second thing uh, see uh, you told that the uh, home program exercise repetition of uh, exercise is a goal yes uh, that is really interesting uh, actually we say at least one time you do this exercise like that no 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 uh, but uh, really, really, yeah, really what you told is right really, really great uh, whenever they get the time and uh, they have to do uh, the exercise uh, that is a very good so, point but, but I, i would advise uh, is a person who is having a pt center so for them they can advise they can uh, advise a uh, institutional based uh, therapy so, yes so finance is also involved okay uh, regarding the intraarticular uh, that is uh, adhesive capsule it is intraarticular injection yes. uh, what what do you want to prefer intraarticular or periarticular intraarticular definitely yeah. intraarticular because uh, there is actually synovitis so synovitis active in door there is an aseptic inflammation of the synovium so that is a reason of the inflammation so in a person having a night pain that that can be due to several reasons like even an infection so we have to rule out before a diagnosing that before diagnosing an adhesive capsulitis so for that adhesive capsulitis is diagnosed and if you have night pain night pain means there is synovitis night pain there means there is ongoing inflammation night pain th- th- means there is ongoing stiffness so that is the apt phase for giving an intraarticular injection of steroid so if you give steroid in the early phase i advise us i i advise uh, the the gentleman sitting here to give uh, the intraarticular injection very early before starting stiffness so in the night pain the phase of night pain itself we have to give injection so that will relieve all the symptoms yes sir actually yes, i am sir. following that one uh, what are you are saying but uh, most of the orthopedicians are doing peri articular injection just a sub sir, uh, sir. Uh, can i but, can but, i add something sir right that also sir can yeah, i add something to that peri articular injection as uh, probably good in uh, in a, in a uh, late phase 2 hmm. there we are we are utilizing the actually the complication of uh, steroid which is the which is a collagen weakening okay Yes, Dr. Dr. Shau, if you can add on something. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Actually, what happened, sir, there is one more concept on this uh, regarding the night pain in uh, adhesive capsule or sort of pain. Yes. So, uh, it is uh, uh, presumed that in a night, uh, during night, the muscles are relaxed. Yes. And the humeral head is uh, rubbed against the subacromial area. So, oh, yes. pain at night is mostly originated from the subacromial area. Mm. so as as along with that uh, shoulder part also so but if you have so you, you have so an x ray in you uh, know side presentation also if you compare the both x rays your the the severe one has a reduced femoral head to acromial distance yeah, that, that is because there is the impingement yeah, yeah. yeah. So, dr saho see so i am impingement is impingement is one of the factor which is causes pain at night and sometimes i also prefer if the patient is having Uh, pain more at night so uh, in addition to the intraarticular i used to add something to the subacromial space also i feel uh, that gives yeah. a better result thank you, than thank you. only to very good very good yeah. very good thank you very much yeah i i, I agree with dr sarv hosti uh, both the periarticular that is subacromial uh, and the intraarticular both the injections are giving very good result uh, yes, yes, for yes. the periarticular and the subacromial space yeah, i don't know uh, yeah. uh, that uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you. Uh, and uh, this adhesive uh, capsule, the, the alteration collagen. Sir, one, 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 oh, one okay, more. Okay, 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 uh, Prem. Continue, please. You told the. Ah, uh, one more question. Uh, you told the, the, the actually. Prem, you are not audible. The band with your band with this uh, low. Can you stop the video? Prem. by the time i will add something thank you sir okay. so i can can i ask you one question oh, sir, sure, sir. yeah like the most of the <laughs> patients sir, sir. whether for the shoulder pain because of the diabetes mellitus they always say you know like during the night time yes, sir. when the temperature drops down mm-hmm. like especially in the winter season they have got more pain yes sir or maybe when they are sleeping under the fan or maybe the you know cooler yes sir then the pain get increases mm. so do you have any explanation about that Yes, sir. I will explain, sir. I will explain two things actually. The pain during night. Pain during night in uh, 
happens in diabetic patient two condition one is the uh, painful arth- painful neuropathies one so here the painful neuropathy during night is due to one thing actually due to the pain gate during the during the day time here here uh, spinal cord and brain is bombarded with several uh, stimuli so the 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 things coming via the c fibers will be blocked to some extent and during night many of these things the sound light everything is uh, closed the, the 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 brain and the spinal cord is now now uh, stimulated with less of the uh, the stimuli so we will will uh, uh, the we will affect we will uh, know the no maximally the pain coming via the c fibers that is one explanation neuropathies the painful neuropathy but here here uh, the uh, the pain during night in synovitis whether this is due to a uh, diabetic aseptic synovitis or a uh, uh, rheumatological uh, the cause due to uh, arthropathy like rheumatoid arthritis is due to uh, one main reason the thing is that uh, during night during night in 2 to 3 am uh for the you know that uh, the, the repair of the body happens during uh, 2 to 4 am that is why uh, many say that we need adequate sleep so during that time two phases are there one is repair as one is uh, removal of the debris and second is repair uh in the first phase before the removal of the debris there will be uh, increased production of uh, uh steroids increased production of steroids so that phase is uh, blunted in persons with rheumatoid arthritis and persons with diabetes so the inflammation actually inflammation is uh, controlled during the uh, early morning that means between the 2 and uh, 4 am so this uh, the elevation of the corticosteroid production is not there in uh, rheumatoid arthritis person and in and in persons with diabetes so that may be one reason that may be one reason why the pain is more especially due to, uh, due to synovitis is more during the early sorry uh, late night that may be one one possible i don't know the exact exact uh, scientific this is one scientific basis given in books so, so that looks good you know, like but my question was to you was like is there any correlation between the temperature no like Definitely, when temperature is down, drop down then yes, there is yes, more sir. pain no? yes sir the the, the okay. joints will become more stiff sir yes sir there is there is the okay. stiffness will be more sir during cold climate okay dr shaw any more questions yes, from the chat yes, box yes sir so yes. the need of power yes. is now the need of power is now minimal invasive procedures whether it is a surgical procedure or a uh, or a physiatric procedure so everybody is now uh, tending towards what type of minimal invasive procedure is, uh, is there for managing different conditions? So there is a question uh, from uh, in the chat box that any particular invasive, minimal invasive procedure highly effective in improving internal rotation of the shoulder. Earlier, the, the concept was that this Kurakakrimin uh, ligament is a offending factor for restricting uh, external uh, internal rotation. Uh, uh, so uh, external rotation. So that time it was targeted to that Ligand. What is your opinion? How how a minimum invasive procedure can be adapted to improving internal rotation of the shoulder? That is the question. Probably, probably a fenestration, ultrasound guided fenestration of the ligament is okay. I think. So. Do you have any experience on that? Have no, you no, no, no. Done it. Uh, Sri is here. But uh, the the improvement in I think internal rotation is is it uh, very problematic in persons with thoracic capsulitis? I don't know. Because uh, external rotation is the most important thing, I think. Yeah, I get it. Severely affected. But, uh, anything to do with the dilatation? Sir, but uh, there are a few studies uh, from Kerala also by, uh, I think, Arunai John. He have got good results, but uh, but uh, the Cochrane review says that that is not so effective, sir. Not so effective. Okay. So study from Arunai John from Trivandrum, mm-hmm. my colleague. But his thesis topic was uh, the the uh, this one. But uh, for that he got good results actually. One but more question: the chart box. Very painful procedure, I think. Doctor Sahu. Yes. Uh, sorry. Ah, uh, uh, you are asking about the external rotation, right? Yes, yes, sir. yes, yes. Ah, limitation external rotation. It's that is the correct. Not the government. 
So, so now, uh, I must uh, uh, study. I have uh, studied a lot of cases. Uh, I have studied a lot of cases uh, with the MRI board. Most of yes. the adverse capsulitis have uh, biceps uh, tendinosis also, and the yes. AC joints and uh, arthrosis. Yes, yes, yes. That that is why. Then that, you you yeah, steroid I, injection I, intraarticularly. Okay. Yeah, periarticularly, or intraarticularly. Uh, along with that, check the tendinosis, the tendons in the biceps. Uh, in in uh, that is the the groove. Second thing, the AC joint. If you give some some just point two ml of uh, steroid in the AC joint and point uh, five ml of uh, um, steroid in the uh, biceps. Uh, It's not audible. Prem, a good point. See, I think Prem, for that matter, it depends. Like, what is the pathology? Because the shoulder yes. pain, there are so many reasons for that. You know? Like, yes, yes, there yes. cannot be hand in hand so many, you know, pathologies which could produce the joint pain. So you need to identify that what is what is the reason? It is a bicep tendon. Yes, yeah, or ACG abnormality or bursitis or supra. Spinatus calcific tendinitis or something else. So yes, you have sir. to treat them yes, separately. So it, it it cannot be you know yes, together with yes, other. Sir. Can I add one point, sir? sir? Sir, can I add one point, sir? Yeah, please. Yes. The, the same the, the same change in collagen, uh, the change to type three and type one uh, happens in uh, in AC joint and other ligaments around actually. But the 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 AC joint pain. Some say that AC joint pain occurs and also the rotator cuff disease occurs secondary uh, during the stage two, the stiffness. So when there is stiffness, uh, the excessive, uh, the strain of the other ligaments and the joints will produce AC joint arthritis and the rotator cuff disease. Uh, that great, is great. aggressive mobilization by an external person like a PT is uh, not good in persons with, that is why, that is the reason why the results are poor in persons who are managed aggress with aggressive mobilization by an external person. That is why self-mobilization exercise is better. So the aggressive mobilization can damage the other joints and the ligaments. So Dr. Rai, what is your experience about suprascapular nerve block in the shoulder pain? No? It's pain good. for the instance in the periarthritis shoulder. It's good, what sir. Is your experience? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's it's good. Uh, just just uh, actually, uh, as a pain, uh, uh, interventional pain physician, I do only intraarticular or periarticular injections and uh, the, these uh, uh, biceps uh, injection like that, sir. Uh, only the third stage, when it is a frozen shoulder, I want to go for su suprascapular uh, uh, injection that, uh, continuously for two, three days and mobilize the joint instead of going for a manipulation. Uh, okay. So I, I want to be very conservative in all the procedures, what I am choosing. Uh, so in the first stage or second stage, I think it is not a, a very good option because with, with the one or two days of a steroid injection intraarticular, the patients are getting very good results. Yes. Yes. That is due to the decrease in inflammation. Yes. Uh, about so, Dr. Roy, what is your yes, sir, yes, sir. take on this? You know? Yes, sir. Last, last, uh, sir, sir uh, last question uh, regarding the suprascapular nerve block. So, the actually, uh, the the you know that in CRPS there is uh, sympathetic overactivity. The same the studies have shown that the same occurs in persons with antacid capsulitis around the joint. Okay. So, there is sympathetic overactivity. That is another reason for getting us the synovitis. So we can reduce this uh, sympathetic firing by giving a suprascapular nerve block. Sir. That's very effective, sir. That is very effective when uh, reducing inflammation. Uh, yes, when there is the, the intraarticular steroids are contraindicated. It is good, sir. Yeah, Dr. Shao, any more questions? Yes, yes. one more question is there. Uh, what is your opinion about the recurrence of adhesive capsule? It's a long period, two years total duration after completion or regaining the whole movement. What is the recurrence rate? Recurrence rate is very, very low, very, very low. But uh, there are uh, studies, uh, there is uh, case papers are uh, recurrent adhesive capsules in persons with under, uncontrolled diabetes 
and in uh, hyper triglyceridemia there is and there is another there is another there is another entity known as uh, acute undersea capsulitis which is seen in old age actually that is due to a uh, that means uh, the undersea capsulitis occurs within hours or days that is actually due to the cppd arthritis severe aggressive that is the actually a crystal arthritis an acute aggressive uh, crystal arthritis that can be that, uh, in th- that case there can be recurrence there can be recurrence but in diabetic undersea capsulitis the recurrence is very low cppd arthritis recurrence is high that is the acute ag- uh, undersea capsulitis recurrence is high so one question from my side you have shown one picture uh, with uh... dupitrans contracture managing the net gain techniques yes so that's because of fibroplasia of the palmar fascia yes what is your experience on recurrence because you are you are not taking out of any uh, hyperplastic tissue of the palmar yes, fascia yes. so yes. after doing this uh, needle release what is the recurrence rate uh, what is your experience we advise actually we advise we have a got a lifestyle modification clinic here we advise the patients properly regarding the lifestyle modification and they will be visiting us uh, every 3 months or so and we know the uh, what the, the their glycemia or triglyceride etc we will be controlling them and we will be advising them regular stretching exercise also that will definitely prevent or um, prevent the progression even we have got good good results in uh, uh, in persons with dupitrans contracture okay is there any difference between a idiopathic adhesive capsulitis and a diabetic adhesive capsulitis is there a difference in that in in the yeah. co- idiopathic adhesive capsulitis uh, is seen in one one in old age second is uh, secondary that means post trauma or injury somewhere injury somewhere like uh, post cabg post stroke etc so the incidence in uh, uh, what idiopathic is usually unilateral when diabetic person it is usually unilateral but the other shoulder can be affected to some extent later so in idiopathic usually it is unilateral uh, there won't be any recurrence in the other, other shoulder actually so in diabetic person the recurrence or incidence in the other shoulder is common regarding course of the disease is the same for both the conditions i think about the course is same course is almost same the, the, the take home message is kindly uh, uh, diagnose the person early and for which is one more point see uh, the external rotation is the main thing the early thing which will be affected uh, mind you the external rotation in your dominant hand is not 90 it is almost 100 or 120 and in me with uh, ligament laxity is almost 150 or 190 so in dominant hand the external rotation is not 90 it is more than that uh, and in dominant hand the internal rotation is less than the non dominant hand so in a dominant hand the external rotation of 90 in a person with shoulder pain and eye pain and a dominant hand external rotation of 90 means an early restriction so we have to manage early with interventions so don't wait for the dominant hand to become uh, uh, the external rotation become 70 or 20 to diagnose a case of adhesive capsulitis so external rotation is a, tr- a tricky thing so dominant hand external rotation is not normally 90 90 means restriction thank you thank you sir uh so there is no more questions in chat box okay okay so i think yes, uh, first to be also there if you would like to have some say on that or like some comments or some sharing his knowledge on this subject no but cost to be there no? i saw his name on the board no dr costa are you there yes i have seen him and then she probably he has left he's not okay. responding probably so if there are no more questions then i thank dr roy chandran for giving an excellent talk and also you know the great contribution from dr prem is you know own experience in treating such kind of you know pathologies around the shoulder joint and also thanks and the host dr pk shaul gave me this opportunity i think i'm pretty sure that pg is probably 
might have been benefited out of this talk. Thank you very much, and good night to everyone. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Very thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prem. Thank you very much. And thank you, sir. Thank you, Sagar, sir. Thank you, uh, yeah, uh, Isliya, sir, and Dr. Rai, sir. Yeah, yeah, pleasure. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Shall we go for a
कर 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 दिया क्योंकि बाइट है ना इसको मैंने जब डराया ना डर के सोचा कम ही जैसे बहुत डरते हैं नहीं तो प्यार भी करता हूं मैं ऐसा तुम्हें मुझे डराती तो प्यार भी करती प्यार करेगा वही डरा नजर तो लगी ही मेरी देख कितनी अच्छी लग रही है इसको कहा से कैसे कर दिए हैं इस तरह से इसका जरूरत कंपनी वाले ना कर दी नहीं इसका करा साढ़े तेरह हजार चौदह हजार का है तेरह हजार चौदह हजार का है बढ़ गया ना एक दिन में मैं कह नहीं रही तुम सही तो तुमने बोला जनवरी में तो दो हजार का ही आ रहा है दो हजार दो हजार जनवरी में पूरी बच्चे एग्जाम देंगे तो फर्स्ट डे में कर लेते हैं तो बहुत सस्ता दस तारीख की चार बजे के शाम को चार बजे दो घंटे पैतालीस मिनट की फ्लाइट है ठीक है ना और उस दिन की है रात को नौ बज के दस मिनट रात को बारह बजे पाँच लाइट क्यों जला रखी है कुछ कर नहीं तो लाइट क्यों जला रखी Thank <laughs> you.